morning to all of you and welcome back to the workshop on writing effective conference papers. Today is day two. This is the first session. And let's just begin with the session directly. We will have time for some activities and some interaction later. This session is on something very important, but something not very pleasant. And it goes by the big name of plagiarism. So what we will do is first look at why somebody might be why someone's work might be accused of plagiarism and mainly we'll spend time on how to avoid it. This is something all of us just have to know and ignorance is not a valid excuse here unfortunately. So it's in our best interest to know when, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, why is it not acceptable and so on. So again let's do a bunch of questions, multiple choice questions. I'll pose a question and if you can simply say yes or no by show of hands at your center. And if your center coordinator can relay the majority answer through the chat, then we can pick up the discussion like we did yesterday. The first question I'll do, I will give you the answer right away because I think it's very obvious. Okay, so uncredited verbatim copying of more than 50% of a paper, is it considered as plagiarism or not? The reason I want to spend a little time on this slide is just to go over these words. Verbatim means exactly as something is, without changing anything, directly quoting and so on. Yeah, I can see all your answers, there's, a very, th there's no question that all of us agree that this is something we should not be doing. Uncredited means without giving any reference, without giving any credit. So now let's make the choices uh, a little more subtle, a little, we're going to get into more and more gray areas. One thing I'd like you to note is even on a slide in a presentation, it is important to give citations. Professor Sunoj also mentioned this yesterday. There are a few ways you can do it. For example, you can put the citation directly on the slide itself. So I use these materials. It's okay if you cannot read it. I intentionally put it in a slightly lower font than the rest of the slide. But it's important that it be there. This comes from the IEEE publications and standards, which most of us use in the science and engineering domain. So I, I'm just using this example from there. Okay, next question. Uncredited verbatim copying of, I would say less than 20% of the paper, somewhere between 10 and 20% of the paper. Would that be considered as plagiarism? Yes, no, can't tell. Okay, just now you can send your replies. I see most people saying yes and a few no. So it's a little important to discuss this. This is also considered as plagiarism. So now uh, I, I just want to jump ahead to one of my slides. I know this slide. Does the amount of material that one uses and copies from somewhere else, does that play a role in defining whether it's plagiarized or not? What IEEE says is that the amount or the quantity does not play a role in determining or in defining plagiarism. So whether you take 20% or 10% or even one sentence, it says that if the material is uncredited, it will be considered as plagiarized. So this is important to know. It's not about how much you do it, but what IEEE says is suppose it has been determined or identified that some some work has plagiarized from one more work. They say that it should play a part in determining what is the corrective action. And if you want me to use a really ugly word, I'll use the word punishment here. But what punishment means is if an author has accidentally used a single sentence from somebody else's work, should their paper be rejected from the conference on the basis of that? Perhaps not. What might happen there is that the referee might know of the reference and say that uh, look, this sentence seems to be derived from somebody else's work. You should put the final citation. If you should put the citation in your final version. On the other hand, if two pages in a six-page paper seem to be from somebody else's work, it's very likely that the paper will be rejected. So the amount doesn't play a role in defining what is plagiarism and whether plagiarism has happened, but it's more in terms of uh, what should be the corrective action. Okay, so let's go back and look at a few more slides. Subtle cases, gray areas as we see. Let's look at this one. Uncredited verbatim copying of an individual element 
say a picture, is this considered as plagiarism? And I think most of us agree so far that uh, by now that even this would be considered because we will see, we'll see why, uh, why this would be considered, but based on the previous discussion we can agree that even if you have one center, sentence or especially illustrations are very important because even though it is a single illustration, one figure carries a lot of data. So, it is like somebody else has done an experiment and the author who has used that work has simply borrowed the results without doing the experiment. Next question or next point. So, maybe the problem is because of this word uncredited that we are not giving reference to it, we are not citing it and uncredited means there are no quotation marks, no credit, no attribution, no reference, no bibliography or some combination of this. So, maybe this is the problem. So, suppose we credit, are we, in, are we safe? So, this question is something I do want to spend time on because a lot of people have certain ideas which are not acceptable in the overall scientific community. So, let us say you have seen a paragraph in a Wikipedia article and you cite, you copy that paragraph verbatim word to word in your paper and you cite it by saying this is from e-learning Wikipedia and the, uh, the article let us say comes in your text. So, you want to talk about e-learning and there is a huge text on Wikipedia on uh, there is a huge entry on Wikipedia on e-learning and one entire paragraph you use directly in your text saying e-learning is so and so. So, would that be considered as plagiarism? So, here I see almost a 50-50 split. So, let us see the answer even though I have said yes, perhaps you can say that it depends. Why? Because it really depends on how the credit is given. What went wrong here is that the person simply used it in the text and gave a reference, gave a citation, uh, gave a citation in the text itself and simply put this reference in the bibliography. So, what was not clear from this example is if the exact words used are the author's words or are they from the Wikipedia article. There is a difference between simply using someone's ideas in one's own text by summarizing or rewriting in one's own words and between directly copying. So, we are talking about directly copying. The only way or the only the only way you are allowed to directly copy is if you tell your reader that look I am directly copying and the way we do it is by use of quotation marks or some other uh, formatting which tells the reader that the material is being directly copied and this is called quoting. So, th there is a lot more on it. I, I will not, the reason I am spending time on this is we have a lot of students who say that they have been taught that so long as you give credit, it is ok to take even two or three paragraphs from somewhere else directly. That is not acceptable in the scientific community. Ok, let us look at the next point. So, we agree that directly copying could lead to problems. So, suppose we write a sentence from a paper by using synonyms of somebody's words or phrases and rearrange the sentence order. Would this be considered as plagiarism? You are not directly copying, but you ha there is one sentence and synonyms are used or there are three sentences and some word order and sentence order is used. Let us see. Here there seem to be yes, no and depends. Let us see what is going on here. Again, if all you do is rewrite a sentence by using synonyms and give credit, even if you give credit, it is considered to be improper paraphrasing and it is a gray area. I am being more strict by saying yes. You can say that the answer depends on how much the sentence is rewritten or how well it is rephrased, but really what I am what I mean is if you simply substitute one synonym for the other, it is not acceptable. I think we have an example of this some time later. So, we will look at the example. Okay. So, some words you need to be familiar with. 
Right now, I'll just throw out all these words, and in the next few slides, we'll look at the meanings of most of these. So you'll use, you'll see the word "cite" and "citation" very often, and these three words usually go hand in hand: references and bibliography. You will see words such as "credit" and "attribute." What it means is that you are letting the reader know that it, the material you are using belongs to somebody else, and you have borrowed it. So you're giving credit to the original source, or you are attributing. Your work to the original source. That's what these words mean. These last three uh, quote and paraphrase we'll spend the most time on. Verbatim we saw meant directly copying. Okay, let's look at why. What are some reasons people plagiarize? And most of these are unintentional. So one of the most common ones is this one. I thought it was okay so long as it, I put a citation. To summarize, the most common reason why people plagiarize is they said I did not know it was not okay. Unfortunately, that excuse won't work. Some other reasons people say is that well, I knew I needed to summarize in my own words, but I did not know how to do it because English is not my mother tongue. Unfortunately, even that excuse won't work. It's okay if you write something in your own words in slightly poor language. That's not such a big problem. Later, the session right after this, Dr. Mukta Atre will tell us how to try to make sure that. You do write in uh, uh, how how to improve your English. She'll do a whole session on that. But simply because you think you're not able to do it, you don't have an excuse for uh, directly copying from somebody else. Internet and online resources are again a big problem because the internet belongs to everybody, right? Wik Wikipedia, especially, it's a crowdsourcing model. Everybody writes on it, so it's neither mine nor yours. Not somebody else's. So of course we can use it. That doesn't work either. Once material is there on the internet, there is a way to tell the reader that this is borrowed from this article on the internet. So we'll do an example of that later. This is a common one, and most of us, unfortunately, fall for this. I didn't have the time. I do my references at the end, and I ran out of time. The deadline was tomorrow morning, and I was busy making sure my figure is okay and my flow is okay, and I didn't have the time. This is, it's not a valid excuse, but it's something that happens so often. So we just have to make sure that we don't fall into this trap. So try to make sure that your citations and references are getting done as and when you write the paper. It's easy for me to say, it's very hard for even me to implement, but you just have to do it. So the reason I started two minutes late is that I had forgotten to put a citation at the bottom of this, the slide I showed you somewhere earlier. On one of these slides, I had forgotten, and I realized that I cannot be doing a session on plagiarism and not put a citation. So that's something you just absolutely have to pay attention to. Uh, there are some cultural issues here. In the West, in the scientific tradition in the Western countries, plagiarism is illegal. It's regarded as a very serious offense. And children as young as, I would say, third standard are taught what not to do and how to paraphrase and so on. We don't have such a strict tradition in our own country. And many other countries don't have this tradition. So we have to be aware of it. But again, now that it's a global world, we are collaborating with each other, we are in the international arena and so on, we just have to make sure that we all follow common norms and common to the scientific community. So even within the serious academic research community in our country or any other country, it is not acceptable to borrow somebody's words and not give credit. Okay, and there are several challenges here. And I'll just go through this one by one. It's, you'll say, well, it's so difficult to do this because you have to base your topic, you have to develop an idea based on somebody else. We spoke about this so much yesterday, situate your work in other people's context, uh, tell readers why the problem is important and so on. But at the same time, you have to do something new and original. So there's a com competition there. You have to rely on experts' opinions, but you have to improve upon, sometimes even disagree with them. You have to give credit to previous receivers, but at the same time, you have to make your own significant contributions and state them. 
So there is a tension or a pull in opposite directions between all of the goals that you have to follow or you have to try to achieve on the right in the right column and in the left column. Let us look at the last one. You have to improve your English because it has to fit the kind of English that is spoken by the scientific community. You cannot or it is not a good idea to use vernacular English, to use uh, shortcuts and uh, lingo as Professor Sunoj mentioned yesterday, but at the same time you have to use your own wo words and your own voice. Okay. So, what do you do in such cases and is it possible at all to overcome these challenges or should we just throw up our hands in the air and say well it is not illegal in our country so let us just do it. Unfortunately, no you ca cannot do this. You have to try to overcome many of these challenges and we will just look at some ways to do so. I am just going to flash this slide here because we will spend sufficient time on each one of these in a moment. Okay. Cite always which means give credit whenever it is necessary, but it is not sufficient. Use your own words or summarize as often as you can. Paraphrase, what paraphrase means is that paraphrase is uh, somewhere between using your own words and directly quoting. You are rewriting somebody's ideas, but it is not completely your own words that is paraphrasing. We will do a couple of exercises on that. So, you have you can do it, but you have to be a little careful while you are doing it. It is much better to use your own words. Quoting directly quoting especially in engineering and computer science and chemistry and mathematics and physics and what not it is very rarely needed. In the humanities it is required a little bit more. So, let us look at what each of these is. Citation simply means you are telling your readers that certain material came from some other source. For example, there is a paper all these examples are from papers that authors submitted. Okay, so, I have been going through your submitted drafts from Moodle. There is a sentence somewhere that says that distance education is a cost effective solution to the universal problem of providing high quality education to large number of students. And right there it, this is the first sentence of the entire paper. They have put a citation and in the references the first one is the source from which the authors have used the idea. So, this is what is meant by citing this is something I think all of us know. The reason we have to cite there are several reasons we have to give proper credit to other people. It is etiquette in the scientific and in the scientific community. There are certain norms and rules and I would say it is just plain good manners at the very least, but at the more serious end there are certain legal issues also involved. Okay. So, there are lots of reasons why we should do it. So, any time you use words or illustrations data or even an idea from somewhere else you have to cite. How to cite? I am not going to spend any time on this because it really there are different styles and the style depends on the conference or journal that you are submitting the paper to. I think Professor Kannan yesterday showed you two different styles a plain style and an IEEE style. There are so many different styles it completely depends on the field and the journal and the conference use the style that that particular publishing venue asks you to, but you have to cite in regardless of what style you use. Okay. Paraphrase is you put a passage from you take a passage from a source material, you include it in your work, but before you include it in your work you convert it in you rephrase it you convert it partly in your own words and you cite it to the original you and you also cite the original source. So, we will go to an example and then we will come back to this slide. So, it is a slightly long example, so I am going to spend 30 seconds keeping quiet so that you can read this. When you paraphrase, let us look at the last paragraph here, how to paraphrase. Read the passage as many times as you need. My postdoc advisor used to always say read it at least three times. Jot down the key ideas in your own words, what are the central 
ideas in the original passage. It is a good idea to then completely close the original passage and use your key ideas to write the paraphrase. So, let us identify the key ideas here. I, there are two key ideas that the Antarctic plays an important role in regulating climate and there is this whole process has become fragile due to human activity. So, one acceptable paraphrase is given here. So, again I will just leave it, you can read it, it is a lot of text. So, try to absorb it. These slides will be made available later on Moodle. So, you do not have to worry that you are missing something. There is uh, the important point here is identifying the key points. If you are able to do that well, then it is fairly easy to write a paraphrased version. Okay. So, what we will look at next is uh, let us do a quick very brief exercise. I want you to match the following, there should have been a 1, 2 and 3 here. The blue is the original paragraph. The big passages on the left hand side are different possible ways of rewriting the original material. What you have to identify this is a match the following, Okay, I am not saying that this is equal to this, but which one of these is a legitimate paraphrase, which one is somewhat acceptable and which one is a plagiarized version. So, let me ask, okay, read the original passage first. Okay, let us look at the plagiarized version. Between 1, 2 and 3, which one is the plagiarized version? People here can just shout out the name. It is easy to spot plagiarized versions here, if you look for synonyms. Is there something where simply one word has been replaced by an alternate word? The first one. Okay. See this one again is from an exercise that I found on one of the important sites. You can think of making something even better. Between B and C, which one is the legitimate one? Okay. Uh, let me do one thing, I am just going to leave this as an exercise for you, because you will have to think about this a little bit and I will post it on Moodle later, just think about it. But the point is that there are many ways or many degrees of rewriting in your own words. And again, sometimes it is a little uh, subjective, what you, one person might think is acceptable may not be acceptable to somebody else and so on. Uh, let us just look at one or two other things and then let us look at quoting. Quoting means writing something which is identical to the original using a narrow segment of the source. It is not a good idea to quote a paragraph, never a good idea, not in engineering research. Using your own words or summarizing or paraphrasing is much better. Sometimes if you want to call attention to somebody's exact original words, it may be okay so long as you put quotation marks, see the quotation marks here and give the citation. In certain styles, they ask you to use a different font or block text. One good example of using a quotation was done yesterday by Professor Sunuj. He wanted to make a point that he wanted to expand on some idea and he used a quotation by Pearl Buck because it provided the starting point for him to expand his idea. He was not talking about what she said in that quotation, but he thought it was a good starting point to trigger or call everyone's attention to that idea. So, if, if that ever happens, you can quote, but as I said earlier, it is very rarely that you would need it. 